डिस्कस द थर्ड चैप्टर दैट इज अ फ्रूट्स एंड सीड्स दिस चैप्टर इज बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू योर प्रीवियस चैप्टर वेर यू हैव लर्न अबाउट पॉलिनेशन यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग दैट वॉट हैपन्स आफ्टर पॉलिनेशन सो इन दिस चैप्टर इट विल बी क्लियर नाउ लेट्स टेक द डायग्राम विच विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड इन चैप्टर टू Now here in this diagram, after the pollination, the pollen grain sticks on the stigma, all right, and the pollen uh, the pollen grains or the male cells passes from the pollen tube, and through the style it goes and reaches to the ovule. Here in the ovule, the female eggs are present and the male eggs or the male gametes meets with the female gametes and the fusion occurs we say it as zygote and the whole process is known as fertilization now what happens after fertilization that the petals sheds off then stigma and the style sheds or fall off or degenerates and this part is only left this bulges and becomes fruit the ovule which is present turns into seed and the zygote which is here the formation of male and female gamete it turns into embryo clear now let's come on the topic now after the fertilization what occurs the ovary turns into fruit ovule turns into seed and the zygote turns into embryo now fruit contains two part fruit con uh, it contains the pericarp and the seed pericarp is the covering of ovary and seed is a fertilized ovule now pericarp contains three layers that is epicarp mesocarp and endocarp epicarp is the outermost layer it forms the skin of a fruit you can see now it is uh, this middle part is mesocarp which is the edible part i took the example of mango here and the endocarp is here which is the innermost and the hard layer which protects the seed clear now types of fruit simple fruit and false fruit simple fruit is of two types fleshy and dry fleshy fruit contains soft and pulpy pericarp at maturity dry fruit contains a hard papery or dry pericarp at maturity layer of pericarp is present here in fleshy fruit epicarp mesocarp and endocarp but here the layers are absent of pericarp dispersal is done by the animals and here the dispersal is done by the wind or it is attached to the fur of animals the example berry avocado mango orange here dry fruit pea gram and maize now let's uh, discuss about the false fruit in this fruit thalamus you must have studied in your previous chapter what is thalamus thalamus is the bulging part just above the pedicel now in this fruit thalamus of a flower forms fleshy part of a fruit and the ovary remain as a small part containing seed or seeds example apple pear strawberry pineapple and jackfruit dried fruits they are the fleshy fruit that can be dried by us to use in future almond walnuts raisins dates apricots Ap uh, wal uh, almonds walnut whatever you are eating these dried fruits they you are eating the cotyledons only 
now the function of fruits fruits store food material which is utilized by the seed it helps in the dispersal of seed it protects seed from the harsh climate conditions or the adverse climate condition now about seed it is a fertilized ovule it develops after fertilization and it is enclosed in fruit a fruit may have one seed for example mango plum lychee a fruit may have many seeds for example lemon orange tomato let discuss the part of seed seed contains three parts that is seed coat embryo and endosperm seed coat is a protective layer we say it as test embryo is a baby plant or a young plant which develops from zygote and endosperm which stores food now, embryo is having three parts that is radical baby root plumule which forms a baby shoot and cotyledons they are the seed leaves now the types of seeds monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous we shall in say it as monocot and dicot Con monocot uh, monocot contains one cotyledon dicot contains two cotyledons cotyledons uh, does not store food and it's paper like cotyledons here in dicot contains food and are fleshy endosperm present and store food here endosperm is absent the example of monocot seeds rice wheat maize and corn dicot pea gram bean and castor plant which consist of monocot seeds are known as monocot plant the plant which consist of dicot seeds are known as dicot plant let's see the structure here this is the uh, uh, dicot seeds and the, it is the monocot let look over here here this part is known as radical which forms the root here it forms the shoot this is plumule this dark covering is the seed coat and this part we say it as cotyledons all right here you are having two cotyledons so it's a dicot the example being seeds now here if we take it as a lateral view side view now this small hole is there we say it as microphyllae from this hole the water enter into the seed this part is known as hilum and hilum is the area where seed attached to the ovary wall clear i come over here now this upper arrow is the plumule which forms the uh, shoot system and this down arrow which is uh, showing over here is a radical which shows the root system this part is the cotyledon and this is the endosperm and the outer part is the seed coat or tester clear and this is a mon mono uh, monocot the i we took the uh, i took the uh, diagram of maize now dispersal of fruits and seeds to prevent the competition for food space and overcrowding now to uh, to search for favorable condition the dispersal is required agents of dispersal it can be through air cotton and drumstick seeds through water coconut and lotus through animal arboreal animals or human now about seed germination it is the process by which dormant or inactive embryo in the seed become active and grow into seedling now here inactive embryo means it can be dormant for few weeks to 50 years some 10000 years old lotus seeds when so 
when it is sowed in suitable conditions start to germinate clear now how a seed becomes a plant now germination begins when seed swells up by taking water this process is known as imbibition the seed coats rupture ruptured and the radicals grow down into the uh, soil and form the root system the plumule grows upward in the air develops leaves and form the shoot of the young plant initially the food stored in the cotyledons or endosperm is used by the growing embryo either the cotyledons form the first leaf of the seedling or the new leaves develop from the plumule to manufacture food for the seedling and after this a, a seed turns into a plant new plant clear now the conditions necessary for germinating of seed water oxygen and temperature water try to soft the seed coat and after the air uh, and it activates the embryo to grow and the water which goes inside it try to dissolve the stored food and make the enzymes to work upon the food so that it is available to the growing embryo oxygen for the growth of seed energy is required and this energy can be obtained by the process of respiration only temperature required favorable condition it requires favorable condition that is for the summer plant like rice and maize temperature ranges from 25 degree centigrade to 40 degree centigrade and for winter plant like wheat gram pea temperatures ranges from 10 degree centigrade to 20 degree centigrade clear now with this let's uh, discuss the activity which is there now activity 3 to demonstrate the germination of seed on wet cotton wool what to do take a, a, gla a glass petri plate and place some wet cotton wool put a few bean or gram seeds on a wet cotton wool leave the petri plate undisturbed for about 48 hours ensure that the cotton wool does not get dry what you observe is that the seed starts germinating the conclusion is that seed germinates on the availability of water look over here the sprouts come out in the beans now activity 4 to demonstrate the optimum condition required for seed germination take three healthy dry and equal sized pea or bean seeds and tie them to a glass slide at different position take take care not to damage the seeds take a beaker half filled with water dip the glass slide in the beaker in such a way that the lower seed completely dips in the water and the middle one look over here and the middle one is half dipped and the top seed is in air leave the setup at a warm place for 3 to 4 days now you will see which one will grow only the middle seed germinates properly because it is getting sufficient air means oxygen and water and even even the temperature as well but the rest too the first one is getting only temperature and oxygen but not getting water here the the last one the seed which is inside the water is not getting the temperature correctly 
and it is not getting the air as well so it will also not germinate so only the middle part a middle a seed will be germinating clear now let's discuss about the different types of germination look over here in the diagram the first one is hypogeal and the another one is epigeal now in the hypogeal the germination take place below the ground and the germination here take place above the ground look the cotyledon remains inside the soil look over here it is inside the soil but here the cotyledons are emerge out of the soil now they get the energy from endosperm all right and here they gets the energy from the cotyledon the example of hypogeal germination is coconut pea maize and gram here in epigeal the examples are bean castor guard cotton and seed clear with this chapter is over uh, let's uh, discuss uh, the difference between pollination and fertilization the process of transferring of pollen grain from male part to the female of the same or a different flower we say it as pollination a process involving fusion of male and female gamete to form zygote and this process is called fertilization pollination is an external process fertilization is an internal process pollination occurs in flowering plant fertilization occurs in all living beings that is plant and animals here pollination required external agents here fertilization do not requires any external agents it takes place before fertilization it takes place after pollination thank you